You'll have to excuse the lack of an intro this week. I'm a little bit under the weather at the moment. In episode four, we showed how the final drive units were made and how they came together in a test fit. The boys have everything lined up exactly how they want it and Jess has welded it together, which means they're ready for the final fit off. Put a little bit of this on. Silver nickel. Silver nickel. Every time it comes out. Mechanic glitter. That's it. Oh, it's going together really good. Happy with it so far. Yeah. Part of what makes this vehicle so special is the way Daryl and Jesse have designed and problem solved their way through this build. Using as many original parts as we have and replicating what we're missing as perfectly as possible. Yeah, it's going to. Do you want to have a crack at driving it? It's going to scoot along. No, I don't drive them. Why not? <laughs> well, we've got to throw you in one, eye. We have to. No. Why not? <laughs> They're not that hard to drive, eh? If I can drive one. Yeah, you're a good driver, though. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> We got two new sprocket rings water cut last time. We were hoping to be able to use the original one we had, but in the end, we decided it was in too poor condition. If it broke while the tank was driving, it could damage the vehicle or a bystander, so it was better not to risk it. We're still using the original hub though. Last one. Oh. With the original nylock nuts. That's it. <laughs> we don't want it coming loose, do we? No. Uh, we're heading into Cairns Spring and Blacksmithing to, uh, we're going to drop in these Panzer One Springs and Spring Housings and uh, see if this gentleman can knock up a complete new set for us. Michael, how are you, mate? Yeah, good, mate, good. Just so you can see, that's an original set there, and that's an original set on there. So, I've turned up a few of these little, in, in case Sleeves, you, yeah. yeah. I'd rather probably put in new ones because these would be too worn and that, you know, we're making new yeah. pins and everything, so. But, gives you an idea of the way they made, the manufacturing and that. Eight, eight springs. Eight sets of springs, yeah. Oh, Jesus, all right. Yeah, so. Yeah. These springs have been with Michael for quite some time now, but hopefully we'll get them back soon, which means we can finish off the suspension and fit the wheels. Last time, Daryl ran us through how he designed and made the idler wheel shafts. Here's a quick recap before we show off how they got finished. This is what mainly pivots around to, so we can tension up the track. And you can see what we've got here, we've got an offset. So as this turns around, Imagine this is the front of the tank. The track will be loose if we go that way and the track will be tighter as we pull it back this way. This is the axle that will have the actual idler wheel on it and this is the one that will be on the tank itself. These pieces had to have a spline and a keyway cut into them. We don't have that sort of capability here, but Northern Engineering does and they kindly let me join one of their machinists, Adam, and allowed me to catch the last part of the process. 
They've already machined a hex head in, cut in the thread, and made a keyway for a locking tab. But there's still a little bit of the spline left to cut. component of the idler wheels needs the corresponding spline cut in. For this, Adam uses a different tool. While filming, a really strange thing occurred. The rate that the cutter was stroking happened to be interacting in a really funny way with the time lapse frame rate on the GoPro. Big thanks to the guys at Northern Engineering for letting us film there. You've just got back with them, eh? Yeah. Let's see what we've got. Let's have a look. I'm really interested to see how they've turned out. <laughs> I marvel at some of this, how some of these blokes do this stuff, eh? Looking good, Daryl? Yeah, well, mate, I'm wrapped at it. This is... Oh, look at that. Nice. Brilliant. Yeah, we've got our uh, hex shape at the end. That's so we can actually turn and tighten it or untighten the track. For when you make a tool for it, right? Yeah, yeah we'll, oh, we'll, we'll probably just get a big socket. We've got a big socket set here. We'll just, I asked him to make it to a uh, metric socket, so yep. it looks like he's done that. He's got some thread in the, in the center. Yeah, yeah, a bit of thread. That's where our two locking uh, rings will go on, and that grooves there to take a lock washer. <laughs> Ready to go. Ready. With these shafts finally finished, Jess can go ahead and test fit them. If they all go back together okay and don't need any adjustments, he can weld them up, assemble, and call them done. Right, so this is the first piece that we got to put on.
loosen them a little bit. We're going to go put the axle on this side, finish that side off. All of this is all held together with uh, tap screws and that now. The, the only parts that were actually welded on were the housing. So this part here and the two pieces that we've had to turn. Yep. So everything now is just as simple as just pulling it all apart, loosening it off and it just pulls out. We're going to make an end cap to seal the unit in. So it's essentially going to look exactly the same as that. With the little chain and everything. Yep, little chain and everything. Uh, pretty much the back of this is exactly how we want our Panzer 1 to look when it's finished. We've got to do the toe hook and everything too. So that end cap will go on and then it'll bolt, bolt on to this. So I'll keep it all sealed, nothing will get on the inside. And then it's just as simple as just undoing that bolt and pulling the cap off and it gives you access to all of this. So yeah. Daryl's turned the piece that uh, fits over and then that's the piece of pipe that we haven't cut down to size yet. So once we've cut the, the pipe down to size, we'll cut an end cap, drill a hole in the end cap, weld the end cap on and that's what will hold that on, hold it onto the Panzer 1. We're going to put on the offset. Because this axle needs to tighten, something is offset. So this is our next part. That goes on there. Cut that on. It's offset like a can, so as we want to, as we want to tighten the track, it'll come around and tighten up. Yeah, this is a little stub axle. So that goes on like that. Then we have a bit of a collar. It goes on. Did we make this? Yeah, we did the collars, collars and that. This will have a seal in here for when we do the final fitting. Then next up we've got our wheel. Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> That's an original one? Yeah, this is the original rear idler. So, with new bearings? With, yeah, with new, all new bearings and that in it. Right, so that goes, goes on there. Well, we've, we didn't have any original uh, little hubcaps, so we had to make our own. So that turned out all right. Yeah, come up okay. And this this edge here just pressures on the outer rim of the bearing. Got a lock ring, a washer, and a nut. So they'll go on like that. I won't tighten them up too tight because we've got to pull it apart again. And then this one just goes on and gets held on with six bolts. And that should have our rear idler. While Daryl has been hard at it on the lathe, Jesse has been preparing the engine for mounting. This is a Hilux motor that we're going to be fitting to our Panzer 1 restoration. I've made up a frame, so this frame is able to be lifted out and lifted back in when we need to. It's going to be bolted to the floor and held in with uh, big thick bolts and washers. And so our hydraulic motor will be actually um, driving this vehicle. By doing it hydraulically, we're eliminating the tail shaft. You've got less less things that need to be fitted. This is like, like we can put the motor however we want in this vehicle. We don't have to line it up with the front of it or anything. It can be spun around, which is actually how we're going to be mounting this. Similar to like what a car would be. So with the fan, radiator fan at the front. So this will be the same thing. So we'll be pulling uh, cool air through the vehicle and pushing it out the rear. So we've had an adapter plate drawn up. This part here that we've got made is a socket. You can see it's got like a, a spline. So this goes onto our hydraulic motor. So that just keys in, just moves in like that and then pushes on like that. So this will be bolted to uh, the flywheel and that will be bolted to the crankshaft. So this is how we're going to be powering our actual hydraulic motor. So we're using the original valve housing. The reason for that being is that Steve, our mechanic, wants to use the original starter motor that came with it. This works by holding it all in place so it will line up on the ring gear to start the engine. It's got some locating lugs on it. And 
we have a local hydraulic guy who supplied all of our parts. He did all the calculations, worked out how much uh, pressure we need and you know how quick we want to go. He did all the calculations. We've just got to do the part of fitting them pretty much. None of the none of the smart smart stuff. We leave that for someone else. That will go on like that. So we've drawn this plate up. So currently it's only got just two bolt holes. It won't be held in with two bolt holes. This is just temporarily so we could line it all up and make sure everything fits perfect. We didn't want to go and drill nine holes and then be out two mil. Yep. We wanted to make sure everything's spot on. And then now that we know that it's all spot on and perfect, we can take that bell housing off and we'll drill all the holes and tap them all, make them perfect. So the way we've done it is so if you need to pull this motor off, you just take these two bolts and pull it off the spline. And if you need to do anything major, you can take that, that piece off and just pull the whole thing off without pulling the bell housing off. Yeah, modular. Just make it a lot easier for any maintenance in the future. These are our hydraulic components that we've been given. So, as I showed you the hydraulic motor before that's going on our engine. So, these are the two motors that will be uh, powering our chain-driven drives. So, this is one motor. So, this is one motor. So, this one of these will go on the left-hand side, one of them will go on the right-hand side. Right. And they will power the vehicle, essentially. Daryl's come up with this pretty cool, nifty way of um, mounting these motors. We, we need to make sure that there's a little bit of adjustment with our chains because we've got chains that we've been given that uh, it's very hard to make them shorter or longer. Right. So we need to make this be able to move in and out. So Daryl's drawn on AutoCAD these, these cool little mounts up. Essentially, they work so the, the motor will go into this part here and bolt on and this whole entire unit will slide back and forth on these bolt holes i don't know if you can see them on the inside see how that's a slotted hole yeah and okay. daryl's got a bolt hole so we'll have a, a bolt that will come up and you'll loosen it up and then you'll be able to slide this along so back and forth yeah like that to tighten it Pretty cool. But that'll be enough to hold it? Yeah, that'll be enough to hold it. Really? 100%, yeah. So this is gonna be how we're gonna drive the tank. So this is our hydraulic steering. The driver will have this underneath his legs. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna bend these out and give us a little bit more room. Yeah, push, yeah, yeah. push both forward, and the tank will drive uh, forward on both both tracks. Essentially, wow. it's, it's very much like a bobcat. Yeah, yeah, or for sure. Or an excavator or something like that. So it's the same thing. If you're going around a corner, and say you wanna turn left, you'd put, Keep driving forward with one and maybe pull back just slightly with this one it will cut flow, hydraulic flow. So it's gonna drive so well, it's gonna be so this, easy to see. This should, should be really cool to drive. <laughs> just depending on how we've got it geared and that, it should spin on the spot almost. You know, you should be able to push all the way forward, all the way back on one, and it's probably gonna spin in turn in, on the spot. Turn on the spot. That's that's what we're hoping. This project has been a joy to follow so far. Daryl and Jesse have restored so many vehicles together, both running and static. The way they tread the line between utilising and restoring old parts and designing new parts is tricky, especially when dealing with a running vehicle. Of course, some people will be disappointed that we're using a hydraulic steering and power system, but if we're making a running vehicle, we want it to run and we want it to run well. It has to be reliable, easy to maintain, comfortable, and above all, safe for the driver and passengers. We also have time and budget constraints. But in spite of all that, the work Daryl and Jess are putting out with this project is just marvellous to watch. That's all we have time for today. Join us next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. Ozama made. Ozama made. Hey, Daryl. Nice idle wheel design. <laughs> yeah, mate. So until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour. See you on the next one.